The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Wealth is about more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. NetWealth is supporting financial literacy and education in primary schools through Banker, a fun, interactive platform for children to learn about money. So far, we have sponsored and given over 100,000 children in Australia free access and want to reach even more. Discover a world of community at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we've got an update episode with Vincent Holland, co-founder at Plutosoft. So if you're unfamiliar, Vincent describes Plutosoft as an end-to-end advice software system that handles all aspects of the advice process. So data-fed fact-finding, research, modeling, advice documentation, workflow, client portal, etc. We chat about the newest functionality as well as their impressive weekly release schedule, which is largely based on feedback and requests from their users. I really like Plutosoft's approach to onboarding and change management as well as how their client portal enables a seamless front stage and backstage experience for practices. I started by asking Vincent what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Well, I think last time I said it was my Sony Hi-Fi system. This time I'm going to say my Fender Jazz Bass bass guitar. Technically, I don't know if you would call that a a piece of tech, but it is electronic, so I'm going to go with that, a musical instrument. It's, um, It's a wonderful instrument made in... The USA and the nice thing with the with an instrument is it's it's like a wine it, it gets better with age. No, I love that and yeah, I think the fact that you can plug it in that definitely counts. And I always come back to this, but when someone is umming, umming and ahhing about tech, just remember we've had Wheelbarrow by Catherine Hunt, and um, yeah, so that definitely <laughs> counts. <laughs> uh, and then I guess moving into well, I guess yeah, keeping in the current. A decade or last sort of 12, 18 months, are there maybe one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your business life? Yes, yeah, certainly. So I think chat GPT is certainly something that I've started to use more. I find, and I'm not an AI guru, so I'm sure there are people out there who use AI better than, than I do, but I find chat, chat GPT is really good at getting a, a base case scenario, whether it's a piece of content that you're looking to potentially uh, a, a write um, it's good to get through that idea phase, get a um, uh, get to a working draft. Um, I do find with AI though, it does st- there's still a human intervention required to um, to basically get something to its final piece. But it, it certainly does a lot in terms of shortcutting that initial um, you know that initial idea phase and and then being able to work on it from there. Yeah, totally agree and really good at sort of fleshing out ideas and giving you that working draft. And as you mentioned, it's just all about trying to avoid, you know, could I, could I have done this myself quicker in terms of, um, you know, not consulting the AI there. So totally with you there. So, Vincent, I know you're back for, I think it's your second update episode, so third appearance on the Advice Tech podcast. But for those unfamiliar, could you please give us an overview of Plutosoft and the pain points you solve? Yes, certainly. So Plutosoft is um, positioned as an end-to-end advice uh, software system that handles all aspects of the advice process. So it's got a very strong focus on advice generation, being able to 
easily capture data about your clients, one point of data entry, being able to do your strategy and scenario modeling, portfolio and product recommendations, and to then generate high quality advice documents in a fraction of the time. So built very much to help solve the pain points in the advice process, which really for most firms, most firms that I speak to at least, that is their number one pain point is just how time intensive the advice process is, how much duplication is generally involved in that process. Our system helps to fast track all of that by bringing it into one system. It's also got your your core CRM capability, your workflow management, um, file management. Uh, We've got the integrated client hub portal. So it very much gives you that one core piece of technology for running your business. And then on top of that, we data feed in with um, just about every major investment platform in in Australia. Yeah, brilliant. And yeah, it's it's really great to see more sort of all in one solutions come to life. I mean, I was looking at the the net wealth buyers guide from last year, so twenty twenty three, and I can see you're making absolute waves from a market share perspective. So almost fifteen percent of advice businesses surveyed using Plutosoft, which is up from about four percent, which is a couple of years prior. So I know the best form of marketing is a great product, but like what's what's contributed to that growth? Like clearly you're solving problems. You get to see the 2024 numbers, but it's implying that you're on track for about one in five practices using Plutosoft. So first of all, congratulations. But also, how have you done that? Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Well, it's it's, it's good to um, it's good to get industry uh, recognition, but I think um, I think there's no shortcuts. So there's no um, there's not something magical that we've just done in, in, in the last 12 months. It really comes down to years and years of, of, of hard work and, and refining and, and trying to perfect your, perfect your product. So we've been at this for, for nearly 10 years. So it, it, it does take time to build really good um, advice uh, technology. I think a couple of things that we've done well over the years. The first is we've always believed that with software, you know, it's one thing to have a great software system. But with software, you also need to get the implementation part right. That's, you know, you yeah. could argue that's just as important as the, as the software itself. So we've, we've really, you know, whenever we onboard a practice, we, we do go through um, a very structured onboarding uh, experience to make sure that every firm has a, has a really good quality experience. We work one on one with each practice that onboards, onboards with us. So that's really important to us that they get that good uh, onboarding experience. Uh, the second reason is that we we work closely with practices, so we're very much in tune from a roadmap perspective of what practices are wanting, what, what's going to help them, what's going to help solve their advice process. So a lot of the work we do is, you know, a lot of the feedback we get is incorporated into our roadmap. We do weekly releases, um, so we're able to continue to build and evolve the platform to to solve the needs that advisors are facing and it's also a very specialized system so um you know very much geared towards um financial planning and the and the advice process brilliant no i really love those two points especially around you know the onboarding and the the hand holding that goes on i assume there's a lot of work that goes into migrating as well like across from another system do you help with that as well Yes, certainly. So generally, when a practice decides to use our system, if, if they're an established practice, they will be going through change management. So that yeah. will include helping them to migrate their data from their existing database onto Plutosoft. So our team um, helps helps practices to do that. So over the years, that's a capability to build up that infrastructure to make that as seamless as possible. That's something we've worked really hard at. Um, but not just the data migration, also the actual change management, you know, especially if it is an established firm that, you know, they might have been using a piece of software for many years. They've got a lot of data in that yeah. system, a lot of processes built around that um, system. So part of it's also that the change management um, that's, um, that's involved when you're, when you're changing the system. So we've, we've built out over the years a very structured onboarding process that helps firms r- really get the mileage out of the um, uh, out of the software. Yeah, I love it. And then obviously they're they're comfortable when they've been onboarded, they've been supported. But then also, as you mentioned, that feedback loop there, where that's really directly contributing to your roadmap. I really love that. I mean, a dream for many practices 
is an out-of-the-box or all-in-one solution, such as a Plutosoft. But then you've also got many other practices that sort of dream of that plug-and-play or that ability to plug-and-play, so integrations and, you know, I want to swap this out for this, et cetera. Do you mind sort of taking us through your thoughts on those two concepts and what the approach has been with Plutosoft? Yes, certainly. So I think the first point to note on this is that we're not in any way against um, integrating different systems. I mean, even in our own systems, we, we data feed in from from different platforms uh, we integrate with, uh, you know, digital signing. So there are a number of things that we ourselves integrate with. So we are not in any way against integrating um, different systems. Our view, though, is that when it comes to the advice process itself, uh, we think that it's important that that part of it is done through one system because there's a lot of complexity in advice. There's a lot of data, you know, even if you're advising a client in a fairly simple scenario, there's still a lot of data. There's you know, there's potentially yeah. link data, there's potentially investment platform fund data, there's, you know, fact find data. So there, there are a lot of moving parts in that advice process. And if you break that part of it up, then in practice, those integrations, in our experience anyway, don't tend to work um, as seamlessly as perhaps they might. I think in theory, it sounds really good just to plug in different solutions, different best breed parts of the process. But but in reality, um, I, you know, we think it's really important that you are running your advice engine on one core uh, piece of piece of technology. The other thing to keep in mind is that the more systems you introduce into the process, the more data, the more duplication, the more Double handling, and at the yeah. um, at the end of the day, as an advice practice, you know, you know, you're an advisor. That's the expertise you add. You're not you're not an IT manager. Um, so you, <laughs> you know, you want to make sure that your job is actually advising and looking after clients, not trying to uh, get too heavily involved in in the IT management. Yeah, no, all great points. I mean, do, do you find that businesses maybe bring their tech stack along with them and then slowly adopt more functionality or is it really about, you mentioned you've got that really robust and refined change management onboarding experience. What are you sort of, what are you sort of seeing there? Well, certainly, you know, when, when you're onboarding for, for a practice, it is, you know, you do have to, you know, whilst there's a structured process, you also need to make sure that it's suited to the particular firm that you're, you're onboarding. And every firm is a bit unique in terms of, um, you know, perhaps some technology that they're using. You know, are they going to continue to use that or, or are they replacing everything um, at once? Sometimes that can be driven by the current processes the firm's already using. So there's probably, there's yeah. probably not a one size fits all for, for how that, how that is adopted. Um, I think you've got to look at each, each situation on its, um, on its merits, but generally, if we're implementing the system for a new practice, they will be generally switching their core advice system for for Plutosoft and potentially yep. other other things as well. Yeah, which I assume is, as you mentioned, creating that simplicity. But I assume that's also helping from a cybersecurity perspective. Do you, do you mind sort of taking us through your approach there? You've got the sort of all in one strategy there with the with Plutosoft. But yeah, what's been the approach to cybersecurity? Look, cyber security is, is is so important, especially from an advice perspective. Given the the important data that advisors will typically hold uh, about their clients, um, so so cyber security is is really important. We're ISO certified, so uh, from that perspective, um, we do hold the ISO um, certifications, um, multi-factor authentication. That's all enabled through yep. the through the platform. MFA is um, one of the most effective things that a that a practice can do from a from a security perspective. So um, it is important with your with your core client management systems, anything that holds client data, to have MFA uh, switched on. And then we also, from a cyber perspective, uh, do things like penetration testing of the of the database. Um, so cyber cyber security is is very much front and center of of uh, of um, of what we do, and I think um, it's, it's one of those things that just becomes more and more and more important the, the cyber procedures that you that you have, and then from a data management perspective, our uh, data is built on an Oracle 
generation two uh, data center, which which is hosted in 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 Australia. Yeah, perfect. No, very very comforting. And I just yeah, I remember when MFA sort of came out and everyone was sort of moaning and groaning about how much of an inconvenience it was. But now it's just it's just muscle memory. You got to reach for the phone or the other device to log in and, and make so much sense. Yes, your, your authenticator app is your is your best friend. Yeah, exactly. Just got to make sure you bring the phone to the workplace. So, Vincent, do you mind sort of taking us through? This is an update episode, obviously. Um, I've taken a while to get to this sort of segment, but maybe some of the new functionality since your last update. Maybe if we start with uh, digital signing through the client portal. Yes, certainly. So, from a, from a roadmap perspective, more more broadly, we look at um, it, there are a couple of things that drive the enhancements we do. One is that um, user feedback. So that that's certainly yep. something we take on board. We do re- weekly releases, so quite often there will just be incremental improvements to the system. And then we've got bigger, more strategic roadmap um, initiatives that we're looking to bring in. And and one, you know, just one example recently was the was the digital signing through the through the client portal. Now that provides a great solution for advisors and also for advisor clients. So through our front end interface. We integrate with a with a partner called uh, Anitra, which is um, yep. I, I guess you could call it the Aussie equivalent to, to yeah. DocuSign, if I put it simplistically. And and what that does is, without having to leave the Pluto Soft system, you can send your client a document for signing on the client portal. Now, again, from a cyber perspective, what that means is that the document's not being emailed to your client; it's rather being sent to a secure client portal where you can have things like MFA. Uh, switched on, and the client can then sign that through the um, through the client portal, and then have that um, you know the the certificate and that automatically filed in the in the PlutoSoft system. So that was um, uh, that, that was a really good integration that we did with uh, with Anitra. Um and then we've you know things like modeling enhancements, so constantly yeah. making changes to our modeling um, system. You know, in a legislative environment, there are always changes that are happening to legislation, changes to products, different different emphasis on different things. You know, a few years back, no one was recommending annuities. Uh, annuities have yeah. come back into vogue. So, you know, you've always got those yeah. sort of um, uh, dynamics that are happening. So you've got to make sure that your software is always, uh, always evolving. Yeah, got to dust off that bit of functionality. No, I'm totally with you. What about from a – oh, sorry, and just before I move on to the next thing, but – yeah, the the Anitra integration that's that's incredibly powerful, and yeah, I think um, we all love Anitra, especially the fight against um, the big players that aren't sort of based in um, Australia, and the pricing model as well is just much more approachable, I think, than than others in the market. Um, what about like on the workflow side of things? Have you got any updates there? Yes, certainly. So with our workflow management system, we introduced a Kanban view of looking at your workflow. So if, if anyone doesn't know what a Kanban view is, it's really that board type type view where you, where you get that um, single view across the across the practice as to what stage clients are at, whether yep. they're in advice preparation phase, whether they're in implementation phase or still going through the the prospecting um, phase. So just having that board, you know, most modern workflow systems will have that more um Kanban view of of the workflow, so that that's what users can now, uh, you know, in terms of viewing across the business, they can do that through the through the workflow um, through the workflow system. Yeah, it's it's it sounds simple. I know it was probably difficult to execute, but it's such a something that's really probably I assume surprise and delight for users to log in and see that they can actually view their workflow in another way that's not just a table or or a list. Certainly, and I think especially for practice owners, you know, there's so many moving parts, so many things you have to be on top of different different staff members. So just, you know, just having that single view where you, where you can quickly get a, a sense of of where everything at, I think, is um, is really helpful. Love it. No, that's brilliant. And then I understand you've also got some new data feed providers. Do you mind sort of talking about that? Yeah, so we're constantly adding new um, data feed providers. Uh, Generation Life, the investment bond provider, is now um, we're now integrating with uh, or, or data feeding in from Generation Life investment bonds. That's another example uh, um, of, oh, yeah. of something that's seemingly becoming a lot more um, a, a lot more common as a, as a strategy advisors are recommending. So yes, yeah, so we, we're constantly adding new data feed providers, and we've now got pretty pretty extensive coverage across the market. 
Brilliant. So just from a data feed perspective, I assume that means you can keep your client's fact find really up to date and not have to touch that throughout the year or even at review time, especially with those um, assets or investments or whatever it is that's sort of under the um, the guidance and the advice of that practice. Yes, certainly. So, so it's about connecting client portfolios into your advice system so that once once you've connected it, it's then going to give you that regular update of the client's portfolio, uh, different valuations, different holdings, all the transaction data, asset allocation data. And then for things like reviews, if you're generating a, a record of advice, if you want to do a portfolio rebalance, portfolio switch, you've got all the data already there. So it's you know a few clicks yeah. and you're able to um, uh, advise on any portfolio changes. The, the other change we have uh, released is bulk Activities. Sorry, just just to expand on that. No, oh, lovely. And what that does is it allows practices to uh, produce reports in bulk. So that could be bulk ROAs, that could be um, bulk service agreements. It could just be as simple as sending out a bulk newsletter to clients. So all of that's now covered under bulk activity. Wow. No, that's really impressive. And I assume just a couple of examples would be you might have uh, clients being reviewed in the same week or the same month or even the same um, recommendation is happening for a particular asset or something like that. Um, and as you mentioned, the with the data feed side of things, I assume that really complements the sort of seamless front stage and backstage when that translates to the client portal. I assume you're able to data feed that through and show that to clients when they're logging in? Yes, certainly. So if you're using um, Client Hub Premium in our system, y- your clients can log in and view their portfolio, um, their portfolio values so on top of their hold of wealth position, which they can see on the portal, they can also get a breakdown of their, their portfolio and, and values. Perfect. No, awesome. Are there any, any other updates you'd like to share, Vincent, before I move on? Like I say, we do weekly releases, so there's oh, yeah. <laughs> I probably couldn't spend the whole podcast talking through all the um yeah. all, all the all the updates, but those are certainly the, the bigger ticket items. I love it. No, and, and um sorry, I know sometimes it can be cool what's next in terms of, you know, if it's weekly, it's like, oh, work so hard on this and then next week it's you know, what's next, what's coming next. So setting a precedent. So uh, and, but it's incredibly impressive. And, and sometimes with the release what we find is you can do a very big release which sounds um which sounds really good and it is. And sometimes you can just make a small tweak and it makes the world the world yep. of difference. So it's um yep. it's, uh, it's just one of those things. Totally with you. Um, I might move on to asking you about maybe a case study or two you've got of maybe could be a recent client or just a business where they're now using Pluto Soft and the benefits they're experiencing as a result versus what life was like before Pluto Soft for that business. Yes, certainly. So I think you know one of, one of the nice things about this uh, this job and what we've built is that we do get to work with a lot of really good quality firms. You know, we love to see a, a good success story where a firm's on board of the software, made the change, and then you talk to them 12 months down the line, you know, what are the benefits you've got out of the system? And to really, you know, hear feedback that it was, um, you know, it was a really good decision, that the, the efficiency benefits they've got in the in the advice process, those are things that, um, you know, consistent feedback we get. On our website, we've actually got quite a number of client testimonials and success stories. So, so if you're interested in, in just Thing across yep. a range of firms that's all set out on the on 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 the website. But for example, we've worked with um, practices like um, Burkhart Financial Planning. Um, Sasha and her team run a really really great um, advice practice in in Sydney. They uh, she took out 2023 20, Financial Advisor of the Year in the FAAA um, awards. Uh, they've been onto our system for a few years now. If I can recall. Um, Correctly, and I think one of the key benefits they got out of the system is before they were using a number of different tools in the in the yeah. advice process. So they were using, I'm not going to mention any names, but using older um, advice production system, uh, something else for a CRM, a client front end uh, portal. And one of the things they've said about PlutoSoft is that they've now implemented this system, and since doing that, they, they you know the tech stack has consolidated. They've got one system, one source of truth, all the data is managed in the system, everyone in the practice has access to everything. Again, back to that point uh, earlier, if you are managing a number of different systems, then you, you know, you've got data here, you've got data there. It can sometimes be hard to be on top of everything, whereas just having that 
one source of truth um, has been really helpful to them, and that's that's quite consistent with um, with practices we work with. Brilliant. No, that's a great example, and it, it must just be such a breath of fresh air for users to to come to work or the workplace and log on and only have to log on to one system and just know that just that clarity that, that we're using this and any changes are going to be reflected in this too. And now that we've got the Kanban functionality, I don't have to keep using you know some other free workflow tool on the side. That, that's exactly right. Getting everyone on the practice working on the on on the same on the same page. Perfect. And I mean, just on the on the workflow side of things, I've noticed you've got it's about a twenty minute or so showcase webinar, largely uh, run and hosted. Obviously, starts with yourself and then moves into financial planning tech industry veteran Justin Labruna. But do you mind sort of talking about your extremely powerful? but easily configurable process template builder because I think that is something that has flown under the radar. You've got this sort of Visio, uh, lucid chart style canvas where you can build processes to your heart's content. Yeah, Patrick, well, I'm, glad you're, I'm glad, you watched the, uh, you're glad you watched the webinar. So, yep. yeah, what, one of the features that we've built in the system is we've created the digital template builder which gives the practice control of their templates and the ability to customise the templates. Now, this has been a bugbear for a long time where practices just haven't had control of the templates or for them to make a change to the template or to build their own is is a massive un- undertaking. Yeah. Um, so in our system, we were very conscious that we wanted to build out a template builder that made it easy for practices to control and, and, and make adjustments um, themselves. So whilst they get a fully configured report library, if they want to put their own stamp on it, customize it, clone it, build their own reports. It's not just SOAs. It could be, you know, different styles of reports, fact find reports, review reports, that they've got that ability to do it through our um, templates. You know, they've got that drop and drag functionality without the, um, you know, without the heavy coding. You don't have to be a software coder to go and, yeah. to go and build a template. No, I love it. And yeah, obviously you've got that from a workflow perspective, but then yeah, just the the amount of time that takes someone in that sort of coding world to block themselves out, shut the door and, and build that template and go back and make those iterative changes is just that's just incredible. So well done. Um Vincent, thank you so much for your time today. What's the best way to progress the conversation? Yes, yeah, certainly. So if any practice is interested in finding out more about Plutosoft, the, the easiest way to do that is just to go to the website and click uh, book a demo and our team can give you a more in-depth view of the software. Brilliant. Vincent, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, Patrick. 